we spoke about AI in the high complex uh, physics, but for example, have you tried to use AI to, I don't know, maybe improve a photo or create images or have you, what is your general perspective about the use of AI in art? Is this something that you have tried yourself or not do? I mean, people still try to say that they are not impressed. They've, I mean, some artists say that they are still not that impressed. Um, this is like very, uh, this is very naive to me. Like the, the, the progress that was achieved with, with visual arts is even more astounding than what I can see with, 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 you know, language models. So right now there is still a room for, for artists to do something to create, but very soon uh, I will see that this room will shrink and shrink and shrink and eventually this will be a very eccentric hobby to take photographs or paint or something because it's much easier to write a prompt than even to search in a huge database of images for something that you're looking for. For example, there are uh, you know, databases that people use in advertising industry. They want a photograph of a certain type, just look for keywords and pick something that is good for them. Today, it's easier to write a prompt than to perform a search. And the outcome is going to be exactly as you want it because you can, you can control every single aspect of the image. Uh, I see no future for, um, for stock photography. I see no future for just, you know, photography used for or, or art used for, for commercial applications. And uh, since these systems are more and more sophisticated, eventually I also see no room for, for any profession that does this. I'm talking about, I don't know what are the time scales. Uh, it's hard to predict, but within 10, 20 years, uh, the situation may already be hard for, for creators. Okay, I see you. Um... I don't know if it's a bit too naive, but I, I guess one counter argument is the sense that I, mean, I think when when we really connect with some kind of art, it's not really the connection with the art. At, at least for me, I don't know if it's for you, but it's also, also seems to be some kind of personal connection. Even if I don't know this person, I don't know, right there, there is a photo of David Lynch, for example. And I guess that you don't only care, I guess to some degree, you also care about the person or do you, you know that there is a human there and maybe, I don't know, maybe you will try to see a documentary or read some biography like we are. It's not only the art, we also care to some degree to the person who makes this art when it's an art that is important for us. I don't know what's your opinion. And that's true. I mean, take chess. We are beaten, we are beat uh, in chess by like huge amounts by the algorithms. And yet the chess, game of chess for people has never been as popular as, as it is today, right? Uh, today, the peak of interest in chess is, is absolutely incomparable to the, to the past. So there are more chess players today than ever were in the past. Mm -hmm. Although algorithms are much better than us and there is no competition whatsoever between us and the uh, AI systems. So yeah, perhaps you're right. Uh, perhaps that's what um, you're right. However, notice that uh, uh, the, this is our hobby to play chess, mm -hmm. right? But uh, the, the, the purpose of uh, advertising industry is to manipulate people, okay. making them buy stuff, and that's how my money is earned. For example, I, as a photographer, I'm doing photographs for myself. I'm doing portraits and, and I enjoy that. But on the other hand, if I want to make money, I shoot a boring commercial that will not even sign with my name or show to anyone, but, will, but I will earn money on that commercial. And that's how, that's what pays for my, my hobby, right? Uh, doing commercials. And uh, what the problem is that, uh, AI algorithms are much better at manipulating humans than humans. We know that already in social media. The, the reason why you scroll all the time your Facebook or whatever feed is because these algorithms know, understand you already well enough to, to feed you with, with the data that you like. So, so they are really good at manipulating people and that's exactly what earns money in the advertising business. So the problem is that at some point we will not need art directors but we will need prompt directors. And in fact, this is not a joke. I mean, I, I'm sure already big agencies already hire people whose job is just to write good prompts. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, perhaps it can stay as a nice hobby and we will still enjoy art in galleries, mm -hmm. maybe, who knows. However, first of all, the creations of the AI will be more and more indistinguishable from our creations. Mm -hmm. And second of all, uh, I don't know what about making money, whether uh, we will be able to to earn where the monies are. I mean, the, the artists 
and the the way they are today is the advertising business where mm. where we can we can we can do for a living unfortunately this is perhaps ending and it could be that uh, um taking photographs painting make paintings uh, or or uh, creating images films even will be an eccentric hobby so I mean, but you do make a lot of emphasis in the sense of, in the area of advertising. But I think, I mean, well, I can just say one counter argument again, and just to, because I'm interested in this, uh, is that, for example, uh, I mean, there's also, there's still going to be the film industry, for example. I don't I mean, we've is there to make, is there? I mean, right. We are, so, so today we are just uh, creating algorithms that are better at better at creating images. Yeah. But I can perfectly imagine a situation in 10 or 20 years where I want to watch a movie. So I write a prompt that I want to watch a movie about this with these actors doing that, perhaps similar to that film, but maybe not with this or that. And I wait five seconds and I'll have a film to watch. Yeah, but so we will not even need the film industry for this. Yeah, but I can, I can, I mean, and you say it like uh, people watch uh, chess players and uh, chess players, real life chess players play. They don't watch two AIs competing with each other. So I guess them. Well, I do. I do. I, I say okay, I. Well, I do, but but this is you're a minority, maybe. But maybe I'm. Yeah. Who no, I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Uh, so uh, maybe it is that uh, AI will be used as a tool at some point, and we will still have things to do. Obviously, we want to figure out what we want to do. Uh, so this is really hard to predict. Mm -hmm. But this is not a threat. This is not the major threat. The major threat is that the tool will make their own choices, and that's what we have to be scared of. I don't think we need to be scared of creating. Of creating a very cool tool because we will perhaps find a way to use that tool as long as we are in charge okay yeah i guess i, I don't know let me maybe you're right and um, but i guess oh i mean for me at least in the short term the problem that i see is that a uh, i don't feel like it's going to be like a super smooth transition in the sense that right now I, I i know that it's happening like i see that for example some programmers are losing their jobs because apparently some i, I can do their job better than that so right now there's actually I know there there's gonna be new jobs, but uh, but I uh, I'm not not sure to say if I'm worried. But in a way, I'm not sure if the amount of jobs that are gonna be created are the same that the jobs that are right now. Like there are people, uh, there are a lot of things that people who have jobs, and it turns out that some AI can do the job uh, better, faster than them. So some people are gonna lose their jobs. That's a fact. That's already something that's happening. And I don't know how smooth is going to be this transition uh, from an economical perspective. I mean, this I'm not worried about because uh, if you, if suppose you want to, you have a factory that produces cars, right? You used to have people that worked in the factory. Now you have machines that do it for you. Yeah. However, you produ produce a car, somebody has to pay for it. Somebody has to buy it. That's what pays for the factory, right? The, the company has to make a profit. So if that was the case where everybody loses their job, then nobody will buy anything because they will have no money, yeah. and that will lose. I mean, that will that will affect the, the factory. So there is a some certain uh, equilibrium that has to be reached, and I don't see that the equilibrium is going to be that nobody has a job. Yeah. That certainly is not an equilibrium state. So we will have to find a transition. We will have to we will have to readjust. But I'm not scared that uh, the new technology will lose all our our jobs. Yeah. I think we'll just have to reinvent ourselves to some degree. And if we don't, then then we will not pay for the for the AI that that will not be useful, and then again we will gain some control. So this is not the problem. I think the the, the major problem is uh, the question whether the goals that we have and future goals of the AI algorithms are aligned. That's really the problem. Okay, so, no, I see, and I, and I get your point. And just to clarify, uh, yes, obviously not. It's not like no one is going to have to have a job, but what, what I think, and maybe I'm wrong, is that in every transition, there seems to be like there are winners and there are losers. So, for example, if you're the owner of a factory, then for you, it's great. You're going to make a lot of money. Then it's the same that you have to pay as much as salaries and stuff like that. But there are also going to be losers. It's not the same to be, it's not going to be the same transition for uh, someone who owns a very big company that from a regular worker. And that's what I know that maybe there are bigger questions and something more, uh, maybe more uh, bigger threats, but just a, uh, yeah, in a way, because I, I'm, I, the way I see it, like, this is already happening in the short term. This is something that's already happening, and I, this is, yes, not not everyone, there's going to be jobs, but it's just like, I don't know if in terms of uh, inequality, in terms of, uh, for example, maybe we will have an even more uh, bigger uh, inequality between rich and poor and stuff like that. That is also a possibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I see.